Eustachian tube is a tube which connects the ear to the nose. As you know, the ears, nose and throat, they're all connected. So there's a tube which connects the ear to the nose. And often uh, you'll feel this if you're in a flight, you had a cold, you're going through a tunnel, you feel the pressure changes in the ear. That's because of the tube. And the job of the tube or the role of the tube is to make sure there's enough air behind the drum so uh, the hearing is normal. So when this eustachian tube gets blocked, there is no, no way for air to go behind the eardrum. And what that does is that causes an imbalance. So there's atmospheric air or air from the ear canal pressing onto the drum, but there's no air behind the drum. So the drum stops working properly. It doesn't vibrate properly. And often patients complain feeling of blockage in the ear, muffled hearing, as if they're on a flight. And often they'll try and keep popping the ears by pinching the nose, blowing the cheeks, and nothing works. So in the station tube dysfunction, the tube gets blocked, which leads to negative pressure behind the eardrum, which then leads to blocked feeling of blocked ears, muffled hearing, popping, crackling. And if it carries on, if it's not treated, or sometimes if it carries on, it progresses, it can lead to buildup of fluid behind the eardrum, which is more commonly seen in children than adults. And uh, it's commonly known as glue ear. So station tube dysfunction is pretty much the problem or the blockage of the station tube. So uh, station tube in itself, I wouldn't say it'll cause a massive complications, but it affects the quality of life. First and foremost, it gives a constant feeling of pressure in the ear where it's very uncomfortable and annoying as described to patients, to be honest, more than anything else. It can affect hearing. The hearing pe people can develop hearing loss because the eardrum isn't vibrating or it may trap fluid behind the eardrum. If it traps fluid, becomes glue ear or secretory otitis media, then in itself causes uh, a difficulty in hearing or hearing loss and sometimes feeling a little bit off balance. Rarely, if there's a buildup of fluid, and people, uh, the patient has cold, runny nose, uh, catches a viral infection, it can straight go into the fluid, which is already pent up in the ear and cause an infection. The diagnosis is uh, based on a combination of the history, what the patient tells, what symptoms patient has in form of blocked classical symptoms as if they're on a flight. They can't pop their ears, popping, crackling in the ears. And then when you examine, when we look into the ear, we often find the eardrum is a little bit dull. Dull means normally when you show, throw light on the drum, it reflects. That doesn't get reflected nicely. And then we can get a hearing test and actually get some pressure readings of what's happening behind the eardrum. What's the pressure like? Is it negative pressure? Is the tube permanently blocked? And in rare situations, we may do a scan as well, a CT scan as well. But usually combination of history, examination, and some pressure readings and hearing tests gives the diagnosis. Uh, first and foremost, it is because of the block, as we know, it's because of the block to station tube. So there's no point putting drops in the ear or giving anything in the ear. We have to look at the other end of the tube. So we examine the nose. If somebody has blocked nose, runny nose, they've got what we call as inflamed nose or rhinitis or polyps, we treat, address the nose with nasal sprays, and that usually works. If it doesn't, uh, then uh, some people, sometimes we do try grommets, which are a good option, but they're temporary. And if somebody has normal hearing, often patients do find that the hearing seems to have got down or worsened a bit, and they don't like it. So it then brings on to the next, next treatment option, which is uh, balloon dilatation. So this came into picture 15, 20 years back, and uh, a lot of trials which were done uh, amongst basically from the air industry crew, pilots, air hostesses, cabin crew members. So what we do in this case is we pass a tiny balloon through the nose into the station tube, dilate the station tube. It takes a few minutes uh, and the patient goes home same day. And it's, uh, it's quite a successful treatment option. Unfortunately, it's not available under NHS across all areas in the UK. In time to come, I'm sure it will be. But for now, a majority of places is available as a private treatment option. Uh, 